One and all, welcome uh, again in week two. This time, in this meeting, we are going to focus on this topic, deviations from rational choice theory. This is a part one, and in this part one, we are going to talk about rationality and irrationality in the context of prospect theory. Later, we are going to focus on heuristics and biases, And finally, in the fourth part, we're going to focus on cheating in economic theory. Uh, we are going to see what Dan Arley's um, fudge factor is about. Okay, uh, before we start, I would like to give you a reminder what uh, you're supposed to read for this uh, week, uh, for this class. Uh, first uh, article provides information about um, perspective on rationality from an um, uh, economical uh, perspective. Uh, it's uh, pretty interesting to, to see how non-psychologists look at uh, thinking uh, and decision-making. Then um, chapter 6 uh, from the textbook and finally an article about economic uh, uh, behavior and cheating um, authored by uh, uh, Mazur but also and then Early. Okay, uh, besides that, uh, I would like to uh, invite you to read those uh, book that, books that you see um, on a slide. Uh, so Kahneman's book, uh, Thinking Fast and Slow, highly recommended. That will help you to understand better the material. Uh, but also uh, those three books by uh, Arely, uh, in which uh, he provides information about uh, different um, aspects of uh, our decision-making and specific type of uh, behavior like um, dishonesty or honesty. So, of course, decision-making is uh, pretty uh, tough uh, uh, for all humans. Uh, of course, it's easier when uh, we uh, make habitual uh, decisions, everyday decisions. It's more difficult when uh, we make big life decisions. Uh, during our Q&A session, uh, we've been trying to define what uh, rationality and what irrationality is. Hopefully, uh, you had great time doing this and uh, that uh, led you to a uh, few conclusions. First of all, what would be really important to uh, remember from this discussion is that Emotions are part of both aspects of uh, rationality and irrationality. It doesn't mean that if you use emotions, you uh, fully behave uh, irrationally. It's not the case. What's also important is that both aspects, rationality and irrationality, are driven or can be driven by uh, two systems, system one and system two. System one is responsible for automatic fast, unconscious, uh, very often uh, processes. On the other hand, rationality uh, is guided by system two, uh, a system that is slow, requires careful consideration and logic. Of course, those two systems, they do not function in dissociation, they interact with each other. Okay, let's move on. First of all, before we start, I would like to make a brief introduction to uh, prospect theory. The first question that we can ask is that why we do not follow cost-benefit analysis? As you probably realize, this analysis can be seen as a major element of rationality. So. Uh, when a person, uh, let's say, is fully rational, then uh, he or she does analysis of costs of making specific decision, uh, namely choosing specific uh, option from a choice set, but also sees um, benefits of making a specific decision. What's also possible when uh, making a rational decision, of course, is to consider all options and consequences of making choice.
it's pretty obvious that not, it's not always possible to uh, make this kind of cost-benefit analysis. We don't do that uh, for two reasons. First of all, people have this irrational tendency to be, to be less willing to gamble with profits than with losses. It means that um, losses can be more important than wins if compared. And that can be understood uh, on the grounds of prospect theory. And secondly, we use specific mental shortcuts instead of calculating all possible options. Simply, we're not computers that have um, plentiful of computational resources that can be used for making really detailed analysis of the information. Thus, we use heuristics and biases. During a meeting online, we are going to do a brief experiment. Thus, I'm going to skip a few slides that you can later on retrieve from PowerPoint that was uploaded onto Canvas. Kahneman, a few years back, is one of the few psychologists who got a Nobel Prize for his contribution to understand economic behavior of humans. Of course, for obvious reasons, uh, it was an uh, award in economy. Let's take a look at the basics of this theory. This uh, prospect theory assumes that there are four major mechanisms that guide decision-making. One of the most important ones is uh, this, reference dependence. It's about that people do not evaluate absolute pace of, so uh, absolute or possible consequences of their decisions, but they rather evaluate relative payoff uh, changes based on the reference point. This reference point is uh, set by framing. Secondly, lost aversion. Basically, people are able and they are really good at differentiating between relative gains and relative losses. And of course, in this case, since they can do that, they uh, are uh, loss averse. Thirdly, diminishing sensitivity is one of the fundamentals of this theory. It means that when you have a hundred euro extra um, and the same situation you have a thousand euro in the pocket has a completely different um, impact on your on your perception comparing to the situation where you have 10,000 euros or a million. That's pretty obvious. I think everybody understands that. And lastly, people are really good at weighting probabilities of specific uh, outcomes. So, for instance, when they are confronting with different options, losses or gains, they weight probabilities because probability of something that uh, can happen and this is a negative outcome is weighted as more important more relevant than a probability of something that can be positive so that's a main difference here how people weight probabilities depending on uh, whether the outcome is positive or negative. Okay, let's take a look at another graph that also is a core element of a prospect theory. As you see here on X axis, we have um, something that can be described as uh, uh, goods, increase or decrease in goods, and then we have 
utility of this X. Here let's create a reference point. Let's call it R and then we have we can measure utility of point R. On the right hand side we have gains. So uh, reference points is just basically zero and then to the right we have gains and on the right hand side we have losses and this graph it shows how people weight and how people perceive utility of losses and gains and this graph mainly shows this lack of symmetry between how people experience gains and losses. Let's assume that we have specific increase in gains. Let's say it's R plus 1. So it's reference point what uh, happens right now plus 1. And the same change happens but on the left hand side in losses. So we can depict that as R minus 1. In this case you see a difference. So the increase in uh, utility when you consider gains it's completely different than uh, uh, increase decrease in losses. So the sigma loss. So if you would compare those two areas you would see that there is a huge difference between both. This suggests that losses loom larger than gains. So basically when making a decision uh, perspective of losses can be uh, more important than the perspective of gains of course if both are contrasted okay that's the basics uh, let's move on to more advanced aspects of prospect theory we can say that people tend to hate losing more than loving gains that describes loss aversion that's an important element of prospect theory. Okay. Also, people do not always make rational decisions because they value gains and losses differently. So uh, let's take a look at this um, picture. Uh, it shows that for some people, uh, let's say in general to all of us, a beard in a hand is uh, worth more than two birds uh, on a tree because yeah we we do have it so people when when they think about what they have and what they can lose they tend to show loss aversion they or we don't want to lose what we already have so probably in this case once you have a beard um, in your hand you will not be trying to reach out to those two birds that are sitting uh, on a on a tree. You will be probably happy um, because you have this one. Okay. And finally, we can also check how this graph that you've seen before is related to two specific motivational tendencies approaching an avoidance. This graph shows that if you start to gain lots of, let's say, money, lots of something that uh, can be seen as a rewarding aspect, then basically your risk aversion increases. So that's the uh, lighter part of the graph. On the other hand, if you start losing, that may lead to risk seeking. And also, if your 
uh, losses increases, that can lead to the increase of uh, risk seeking. It means that when you have this perspective of losing in the future and losing a lot, then probably this tendency to risk seeking may increase. On the other hand, if you see that you are going to gain more and more in the future, you have this perspective of uh, gaining more and more, probably that will de uh, decrease this risk-seeking uh, tendency. But if you are already in the state of winning lots, so you are on the right-hand side of the graph, so let's say you have a really good job and you see that uh, in the near future you're going to earn more and more, so you're going to gain more, uh, your tendency to risk aversion will increase. Of course, this, this is just a model. It may be different depending on a situation, experience, and of course, uh, it may differ across individuals. I wonder whether you can find examples that deviate from this model. Let's discuss that during the Q&A session.